Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Table of Contents widget inside Elementor Pro. This widget can be very helpful if you have a page with a lot of content and you want the users to be able to easily navigate the content. So this is the example we're going to be working with in this tutorial. And as an added bonus, I'm going to show you how I was able to have the Table of Contents widget uh, sticky on the left panel. So when the user is scrolling down, they can easily navigate and choose the different um, topics right here. And as you can see, it will always stick to the left side. So now let's just jump right into the back end and show you how this was built. So here we are on the back end of the website. And as you can see, this section right here is split into two columns. We have the table of contents on the left and all of that content on the right. So what I'm gonna do first is show you how this area is structured and then how we can configure this and make it sticky. So I'm going to open up the navigator right here so you can kind of visually see how this website is built out. So in this column, I have it separated out into headers and then text and then if there's any video. So I have it kind of separated out into different widgets. That way it just makes it easier. Uh, the good thing about this technique is you don't have to uh, have everything separated out. If you have it as one long uh, post or HTML widget, you, this will work just as well. It's just a little bit easier to show in this tutorial. So if I click right here, you could see all of these headers right here, I have at an H2 tag. So what's important is you wanna make sure that all of your headers here, so when you scroll down heading, heading, you gotta make sure that they're all set to the same H tag. So you don't wanna have an H2 here, an H3 here, or H4, you just wanna keep it consistent. So in most use cases, you're gonna to wanna to have an H2 tag here, whereas like this top one would be an H1. So let's just scroll down here and you can see right here, the second heading is uh, same thing. It's an H2 and down here, H2. So you get the idea. You wanna make sure that it's consistent. The reason why that's important to make sure your H tags are consistent is because this is how the widget is pulling in that information dynamically. So now let's just go ahead into the widget and show you how I was able to configure this. So the first thing is you can change the title right here. So table of contents, you're going to see right there, you can change that. So this is the HTML tag for this uh, title right here. So you can change it to H2, H3, whatever, or div. So let me go ahead and actually remove the H2. So like I said, the way it works is if you look right now, there's no headings that were found on the page. So that's why you need to make sure that you select one of the uh, H tags inside of here. So if we select H2, you can see right here, it's pulling in all of those uh, titles automatically. So let's say I accidentally thought I had an H3, but it you know wasn't. So you're gonna see, it's not gonna match up if you don't select the right one. So you wanna make sure you select the correct one. So the next area is, do you want bullets or numbers? So as you can see right here, I had it set to bullets. And then you can change the icon right here. So under advanced, they have some other options here. So word wrap. So if you look right here, if you start to scale this down, you're going to see it, it cuts it off right here and it just adds, you know, the three dots. So it's not going to ever carry down to a second line. But in this case, I wanted to have that on or off, I should say, sorry. And if you want to be able to have it where the user can minimize the box, you can do that here. And they give you different uh, breakpoints here. So you can have it where it's automatically uh, collapsed on mobile or tablet. Um, I personally don't really like this feature. I just turn it off, but they give you the option to change the different icons and all of that here. And then they give you some different options for the hierarchical views here. And you can see right here, but in this case, I just have this simple heading. So this isn't uh, needed really. So if we jump back over here to exclude, they give you the option to actually exclude a, a whole heading over here if you don't want it to be you know, indexed inside the table of contents. So I'm gonna show you how to quickly do that. So the way it works is you have to have a CSS class on the uh, heading or the H tags, and then you just put it in as a selector. So let me show you how, to, how I did that. So on this example, if you go under advanced, I called this um, CSS class image. If I go back over into the table of contents, under exclude and just put a dot and then the name of the CSS class. So you're just calling that CSS class. I just called it image and you can see it instantly removed it right here. So if you do have a reason to exclude it, it give you the option to do that. So let me remove that. So we have the four different titles right here. 
Now we can jump over into the styling and show you the different options they have in here. So if you look right here, this uh, is separate out into box, header, and list. So box is the whole container. So if you wanna change the color background here for some reason, you just do that here. So in this use case, I just wanted it to be white, so I removed that. And you can add a border if you want. You can change the border width here, so you can see I have it set to white. So whatever's gonna fit your website and your branding, you can change all of that settings right here. And down here, I did add a little bit of a box shadow, just so you know that it's kind of always floating there. Uh, this is always optional, of course. So if you just go under here, I just added a simple box shadow, two, two, six, negative two. You know, you play around with these settings if you wanna have a bigger drop shadow. I just figured a little drop shadow would be good for this tutorial. And if you jump over to heading, this is of course where you're gonna change the background color here, anything along that, you can change how much of a gap you want in between the list and the header. So I usually just keep kind of keep that at default. And now under list, this is where you're gonna have a lot of different options between a normal state, hover, and active. So here you can actually change the uh, max height if you wanna do any of that. The typography, you can change that here. I'm gonna set that back to default. So they have an indent option here. But if we jump over into the normal state, you can see I have it where if the user is hovering over, the text is gonna change the blue. And then if they actually select it, which is what they call the active state, it will stay blue. Um, so I do recommend in most cases, having the hover and the active the same state, that makes it a better user experience. Uh, you don't wanna have it where normal is one color hover and active is a totally different color. I mean, it's optional, but I, I prefer to have it where it's the same color. So it's a better user experience. And then if you want, you can actually add an underline if you would like. So when the user hovers over this, you can do that. I recommend adding an underline if you have other links on your website that have underlines, just to keep it consistent. It's just a little detail, but it can make a better user experience. And of course, under marker, this is where you can change the bullet colors right here. So if I wanted to change that to like a red, you can see that right there. It's a different color. But let me go back into here, change it back to what I had, change the size. They kind of give you a lot of different options here. I'm gonna put that back to default. And that's really about it. So let's go ahead and hit update on this page and let's see how it's working on the front end. So if I hit refresh here, you can see if I scroll back up to the top, it's got the blue, the user can click there. That works correctly, it scrolls down here, scrolls down right here. So if you look at how it works, when the user is scrolling down, as soon as that header is in the viewport, it's gonna select it right here. I don't believe there's an option to you know offset it. So what I would prefer is if the user scrolls like right here, it would switch. Um, I don't know of a way to do that. You can always just add more spacing if you want, but then it starts to look a little wonky. You can see right here, I added quite a bit of a space so you can see it. But yeah, you can see as soon as the user scrolls down right now is when how to rank in Google image search pops up. Once you get that next header in right here, how to add FAQs in the Google search. So it works well. And what I do like is the active state, like I said, when you click on it, that's considered the active state. So you wanna make sure that the user knows they're on something. So I wouldn't just keep it like that black color. Keep it, as this, like I said, the same as the hover. So that's pretty much all the settings inside the table of contents widget. Like I said, the most important thing is you just wanna make sure that your H tags are correct and you just add them right here. So now, like I said, I'm going to show you how you can enable the sticky column. So when the user scrolling, it can always say sticky. So let me copy this widget here and let me remove this. So the way it works is you have to create a intersection to make it sticky. So if you make a two column layout, this is usually how it would look. You just have a big gap here, but you wanna have it where it sticks to the top. So if I just go back into here and paste in my table of contents widget, if I just go to paste, you can see right now it's not sticky. So if you don't add it as an intersection, you're not gonna be able to enable the sticky option. So let me go into here, delete, and if I go to intersection, the very first widget right here, click and drag that in, and by default, it brings in two columns. Remove that. So if you know you're gonna use this widget, 
as a sticky column, you can do your intersection first and just pull in the Elementor table of contents inside the intersection. So in this case, I just have it in my clipboard. I'll hit paste and you can see right here, it's still not sticky. So the way you make it sticky is you select the intersection right here, go to advanced motion effects, top, stay in column. So this is a, a newer feature inside of Elementor Pro and Elementor. So if you don't have the latest version, you may want to upgrade because you can see right here, that's all it takes. So it's a cool little trick where this used to take custom coding to do it. Now it's all built into Elementor. So any sections you want, you can have this option right here, stay in column. So it knows that this intersection is inside this column. And as long as this column is in the viewport, it will always stay sticky. So let me show you if I add um, a whole section down here. So let me go into here. It, it will actually stop. So let me just throw in um, a big spacer so you can visually see that this widget actually will stop correctly. So if I just add a really tall widget, if I scroll down the page, let me get this navigator out of here. If I scroll down the page, it stays sticky and you want to make sure that it stops. So you can see right here, it stops right here. Let me add this background color so you can visually see that it's stopping correctly. So if I just change this to like a black color, you can see right here, when you add that sticky, it's gonna stop right there because that's the end of that column right here. So it's not gonna keep following down the page. Because if you go here, uh, this is something that a lot of people might uh, forget to click, is if you don't click that button right there, it's gonna stick to the top like the way you want. It's gonna continue to follow down the page. So that one little click is going to fix that where you don't have that issue. And of course, I always like to test it. So inside a mobile mode, I make sure that everything is looking correct. And like I said, if you do wanna have it where the user can collapse or minimize the box, you can do that here on mobile. So you can have it where by default, if you click minimize box on mobile, the user's going to have to actually interact with it to open up. But I personally don't, like I said, like this feature too much, so I just keep it open. And that's it for this Elementor tutorial. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new videos like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.